Leprechaun here, welcome to my channel. I sincerely hope you enjoy this video. Hey there folks, Leprechaun here. Uh, just did a new setup for my altar, I thought I'd kind of show you that real quick and uh, explain what I did. Alright, so if you saw my last altar setup, then uh, as you can tell, it's a little different, but some things are very much still the same. Uh, I decided to go ahead and change it a little bit with uh, Samhain coming up. Now, as I've said, this is a working altar. I do use this altar for ritual and such. Um, but I feel it's good to kind of change it every now and then, change the decor on top, uh, rearrange the tools depending on the uh, time of year and um, what kinds of things I might be uh, more working with. So as an example, you can see I still got the white and the black candles on the ends, but I've added this giant uh, pillar candle, which I showed you in my little tour thing to the top of my altar, um, and I've added this skull candle. Um, obviously, skulls go along with uh, the time of year, Samhain. It's about death and rebirth. Around the skull candle, I've uh, sprinkled some herbs. We've got some mugwort and some rosemary sprinkled around, which uh, are associated with this time of year. And mugwort also um, kind of uh, allows for the um, heightened energy of, of psychic vision and, and uh, um, things of that nature. So mugwort's a really good one if, if you plan on doing any kind of divination type stuff. I got uh, rough quartz here, uh, raw amethyst here, uh, raw amethyst. Raw amethyst is also uh, associated with the third eye chakra, if you're into chakras. Um, it's also associated with um, psychic vision, dreams, and stuff like that. So another good one to use this time of year when the veil is at its thinnest. I still have the antler pieces um, as a representation to Kirnunos. Uh, I also put my wolf up here. Uh, wolves often associated with the moon, which this particular Samhain is going to be full. So that's, that's kind of exciting. Not only is it going to be full, but it's, it's going to be a blue moon too. So that's pretty cool. Um, and of course, uh, I do, I do also worship uh, the goddess uh, Morrigan. Um, so that's that's why a wolf for representation for her, as well as the chalice and the cauldron. Both of those typically associated with this time of year and with the goddess, as well as my blessed moon water. Uh, now, it is uh, illegal to have actual crow or raven's feathers, uh, so these are not actually crow or raven's feathers, but they're just, they're painted feathers to represent them. Um, but I got those up there also, which are associated with uh, Morrigan. Um, and apple here... Uh, often associated with divination, uh, rebirth, immortality. I've also got a gourd here, a little mini gourd, which is one of the um, one of the crops often harvested this time of year. Uh, you can also do things like putting bread on, on your altar, uh, anything made from grains, because this would be the time of year when grain is harvested. I personally don't want bread sitting out on this as it's inside my apartment. I don't want it molding and attracting flies and pests. So I chose uh, two items that would likely not go bad while they're up here. I also got my selenite, a 
selenite um, has high energy vibration is really good for for having on this kind of an altar uh, it's often used also in um, purification energy cleansing rituals things like that uh, another thing you'll notice that I've changed is up here on the wall uh, I've got one of my bracelets dangling here um, with hematite and sodalite uh, I don't wear it on my wrist as much as I used to because the string is stretching and I have nearly lost it. It has almost flown off uh, my hand a couple times. So it's currently hanging and I will wear it when I do rituals and spell work. Uh, I've also got one of my necklaces that needs, I got to rewrap the stone, the, the wire uh, basically has broke and has been started slowly coming off so I'm currently not wearing that quartz point but once I rewrap it I will be wearing that for now it's just dangling at my altar and then I've got my dowsing rods uh, at my altar it's uh, it's really good to have tools of divination on a Samhain altar um, divination is is really big this time of year you know the veil is at its thinnest so it's easiest to communicate uh, to work with ancestors spirits or even deities which is why I also have my tarot cards now up on my altar uh, and they will remain there the only time that my divination tools will come off is while I'm using them and then they will go right back up where they currently are and then because uh, this time of year is often associated with our ancestors and um, loved ones that have passed, I put this pin up here, uh, which represents my family heritage. Um, a friend of mine uh, had a trip to Ireland and came back with this um, for me. So um, this represents my ancestors. Now, I will be putting some mold wine in this chalice as an offering. Uh, I do not have that ready yet. I got all the ingredients but missed one. I completely forgot the orange. So I, I got to get orange and make the mold wine, but I will be putting mold wine up. Um, I don't have any obsidian or I would have an obsidian stone up here as well. Obsidian is another uh, good stone to associate with Samhain. Uh, anything really that represents death, rebirth, um, the goddess in this time of year, darkness, uh, are good for an altar. Now when I say darkness, I don't mean like what some would call evil. That's not what I'm referring to when I say darkness. So uh, I don't want you to get that idea. Uh, we're not worshiping evil deities. We're not doing sacrifices, anything like that. Um, but it's a pretty simple altar setup. And really for Samhain, uh, if you want to do your own altar, it's uh, anything that has those kinds of associations, um, Rowan is another thing you can use for your altar um, besides the uh, mugwort and rosemary herbs. Obviously, rosemary is one of the easiest to get a hold of. And um, skulls, skulls, any, like I said, anything that associates with death, pumpkins, jack-o'-lanterns even. So, I mean, really, you could do like a whole Halloween setup and... It would be a Samhain altar. Um, it's all up to you as an individual practitioner what you want your altar to look like. And some people do keep a separate altar for the Sabbaths than their working altar. Um, I do not. I don't have the space. And um, I do use all this stuff in my uh, magical workings. Uh, in fact... On Samhain night, I will be lighting this candle and burning it. 
um, as a representation of death and my ancestors. So when I do my rituals to evoke my ancestors to join, uh, I will be uh, using all of this in that, which is another reason that this altar is as much a Samhain altar as it is my ritual altar. Now, other things I like to do for Samhain is um, feast. Feast, yes. Uh, I will definitely be having some really good food. In fact, I got a corned beef brisket I'm going to prepare uh, with some carrots and potatoes, cabbage. Mm, mm. And uh, the particular recipe I'm going to use uh, also calls for adding um, beer over the uh, brisket while it slow cooks in, in a crock pot, essentially. Um, so what I will be doing for that is I'm going to be using a hard cider in my recipe. I'll let you guys know how that works out if the hard cider goes well with the brisket. I imagine it will. Um, and then besides that, I will also be making some traditional soda bread. And uh, I will also be making some uh, soul cakes. Uh, to serve up and have at Samhain. Uh, we will have a feast together, music, dancing, um, evoking the ancestors, and then we will take some of that food and uh, we will take it outdoors um, and offer it out to the, uh, the deceased and the spirits. Um, I will also be lighting candles in the windows, all the, you know, real traditional Samhain stuff. So uh, when that happens, I will probably take pictures of everything and uh, I may record a video that day uh, for that. We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, I just thought I'd share this with you. Um, maybe it inspires you to do your own kind of setup or something or gives you ideas for what you want to do uh, for the season. Uh, and with that, oh, uh, real quick, just so you guys are aware, uh, let me move so that light's not. There we go. Uh, just so you guys are aware, I do have an Instagram, uh, Leprechaun LS84 is, is my tag on that. Wait, let me, let me make sure that's right. That, that might not actually, might be 84 LS. Let me check. <laughs> yeah, oops, knocking stuff over. Yeah, it's Leprechaun LS84 is my Instagram and I do post video or not videos uh, pictures of my Samhain activities there um, as well as some of the other stuff I do when I do rituals and things like that so you'll be able to check out some of those pictures um, for now that's where I'm gonna leave this video and uh, until next time peace be with you and hope you have a good time